Good morning, everyone. Hello and welcome. I'm here to talk to you today about Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Star Wars Jedi colon Survivor. The sequel to Star Wars Jedi colon Fallen Order? It's JFO. I know that much. Uh, hi, I'm Jeff Gerstman. I was given the opportunity to head into the city, the big city, and check out a few hours of uh, of respawns, you know, upcoming Star Wars game. Um, I played, uh, let's call it maybe half of the first one, and always meant to get back to it, and kind of never did. I was always like, this is cool, um, and and I I didn't ended up uh, sticking with it, but uh, it always seemed like a neat game. Um, and uh, yeah, so I have a bunch of footage. I'll tell you right now, it's the same footage that everyone else has. <laughs> um, that's something, you know, th this is, uh, I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone's ever been, nef maybe, but I, I really don't think anyone's been nefarious with this, but there's a thing that happens a lot around events like this, where when they send out the invites and you're like, you know, Hey, that's cool. Uh, can we capture footage? Are we going to capture our own footage there? And they're like, oh, let me check. Yes. Yes, you will. And then two weeks later. Yeah, that no, no, that's not gonna. Or, or sometimes not until you show up to the event with your capture gear, and someone's like, "What are you doing?" No, absolutely not. Anyway, uh, I don't, I don't think anyone ever. I don't think that's a way for people to. I, I maybe years ago, I can think of a couple of people and a couple of companies that may have been uh, gr grimy enough to try to lure people into. Well, yes, of course you'll get your own footage, and then be like, "Nah." Um, I, I really don't think that's the case here. Um, I almost feel bad even mentioning it because people are going to go, oh, but you know, yeah. So anyway, I've got, uh, the same six videos that everyone else has. Um, and it's time to, it's time to check them out. Uh, I haven't seen the, all of these. I've kind of skipped through a couple of them and been like, oh yeah. Uh, some of the stuff is stuff that I saw in my time with the game. I played for, you know, uh, three hours or so. And some of it is stuff I did not find. They kind of gave us a, a, a build of the game and said, hey, you're about an hour in, uh, and here you go. And, and, and set everybody loose. So there are areas that I got into that someone had to like tap me on the shoulder and be like, you're not going to be able to make it through this. You're not going to be able to progress here. You should you go somewhere else. Uh, and, and, and all that, it was not a, a, an especially guided demo. It was, it was more just kind of like, here's a chunk of the game. And, um, I got pretty, I feel like I got pretty far in it with the time and saw a big story beat that I'm not supposed to tell anybody about, <laughs> you know, it's a big long list of like, Hey, don't mention this. Don't mention this. But, um, you know, the game is set five years after the events of the previous game. Cal Kestis is back. BD one is a th still a threat and, uh, and everyone is here. Uh, or I don't, actually, I don't know. Everyone was here. Um, but, you know, because I remember you did have kind of a ragtag group in that first game. Let's get into the footage. Let's, let's take a look at the footage and, uh, and, and, get, and get into this. Uh, let's see. Let's go over here. And then we'll hit play. Um, you know, if you, if you didn't play the first game, it may help you to understand that this game is... Let's call it Souls esque. It's let's call it 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 is it is somewhat in the style of those games. It is not like a stamina based combat system or anything. You can still kind of wail away on the buttons, and you know you you do have a limited amount of force that you're kind of earning and spending. But um, what that means is you have a limited number of heals. You see over my head here, behind my chair, behind my chair here, he's got two heals. Um, and uh, you have meditation points that serve as the kind of bonfire equivalent. You go there to spend skill points and level up. You go there to replenish your um, your your the number of heals that you have. And also, when you use it, it causes all the enemies to respawn. Um, Calcastus has this grimy beard. One of the, you know, one of the primary things I found myself unlocking we're definitely getting closer. or I finding in chests and stuff like that were uh, cosmetic pieces, uh, new beard so styles, new facial so hair, new pants, new shirts. Uh, you reach a point in the game where you can go change all that stuff out. Um, 
And yeah, let's see. I mean, you start with a, a pretty decent uh, batch of force abilities, or at least in the, you know, in, in where they where they put us. You know, you got your force push. You got your force pull. What more do you want? You got it. You got your lightsaber. You got multiple lightsaber stances, in fact. Let's take a look. Uh, and so you're you're fairly well established here. Uh, again, five years after the, the the end of the the previous game, um, they didn't let us play the first hour. They kind of dropped us in to what seems to be the kind of the first major area. And um, this is the this area is a side quest area. You hear a rumor about some prospectors that have gone missing, and you're like, I wonder what could have happened. And this is this is probably this is probably the answer. This little guy. Um, when I did this fight, I um, you see that meter at the bottom middle with the hourglass on it. You get the ability to slow down time for a, a brief handful of seconds. Um, and so I started the fight by popping that and and then wailing away on on this rancor. Um, and it went pretty well, I'll say. The fight went pretty well. There's there's I'm sorry, there's there's someone apparently in my front door and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Um So this fight, I didn't find it to be particularly challenging, but there's, you know, obviously you you have some difficulty settings and and some different things at your disposal. The difficulty settings seem to impact the timing window on your parries, as well as your um, the amount of damage you do and the amount of damage you receive. Oh, that's bad. That's the end of that one. Gosh, brutal. Um. Let's get into the next one here. Keep more peaceful times. Uh, these are kind of the, this is the, this is kind of the first outpost you find, the first kind of friendly faces that uh, that I saw during my time with the game all kind of come around this area. Um, these guys are fun. Uh, well, I don't see if it says, see if it's got the dialogue. The first time you come in, these guys are talking, and then they're like, sh 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 "Who's this new guy? What's going on? I don't know. Act useless." And uh, and that's a fun, it's like some fun, lighthearted moments, you know, you know, goofy droids, and then oddball alien goobers, you know. Uh, it's it's got it's got a, a fair amount of that. Here's a meditation spot. These become fast travel points. Also, uh, like I said, they they can restore your health, fill, fill your meters back up. This is where you can go to change out your stances, spend your skill points. Um, as you can see here, the the dual wield is is more of an all out assault. The the kind of uh, the the what the Darth Maul style double blade is kind of I, I spun is something that's like kind of good for crowd control situations. Uh, you can only take two stances at a time. You see on the skill tree, there's a couple of broken slabs over there. It makes me wonder if you're going to uncover more lightsaber styles as you go. I don't actually know. I would assume that that's what that means. I don't think they would give you a skill tree for like, you found a blaster, you're a Jedi, but hey, now you got a gun. <laughs> I can't imagine that that's the direction they're going in. But, um, you know, when it comes to these demo situations and you're like, look, I've, I've got a few hours to get as far as I can and see what I can see. Um, that led to me kind of specking in the direction of survivability. And so you can increase your max health. You can make it so your your the heals you get from the droid heal more. And so I took a few of those things and got some saber moves. And I, I, I'll say I didn't necessarily find any of the... The, the saber moves to be all that effective. Um, force push, force pull lets you do some fun stuff. You know, you can kind of pull enemies towards you and stab them. And that is pretty awesome. Maybe smaller enemies like stormtroopers and droids and stuff, not this thing. Um, but you do have some, some interesting combat options along those lines that kind of keep it fresh. Also, you are cutting people in half <laughs> you are droids raiders whatever man you are 
you are taking care of them. Uh, the droids, some of them go down in one shot, which is satisfying. You know, like they've got guns and, you know, you got to deal with, you know, the, maybe they'll chip away at you a little bit, but like they're not existential threats. They're, they're just hassle you, especially in a crowd, Doesn't you know? Seem to have helped. The echo still um, and so I, f I find that they did a pretty good job of making you feel like pretty freaking powerful. I did not. I did not go here. I did not see this. Um, this appears to be a. Oh, yeah. I did find uh, the one I was in didn't have a timer running, but I did find an area that felt like an optional area that was uh, way more puzzle focused, and it almost felt like kind of a Breath of the Wild shrine sort of situation. Maybe that's because I was like picking up energy balls with you know, with the force and then putting them into receptacles that would make doors activate or make, uh, or make, uh, walkways appear and, and things of that nature, you know, I had, had that kind of puzzly vibe. And at the end of it, I, I think I got a perk so you can find 25 perks over the course of the game and equip them in sort of a loadout. And that'll be like, Oh, your block meter is bigger or, uh, you know, like, like do, tweaks like that, uh, were the ones that I, that I found. Um, Let me see what I can do. What you can do is wall run. It's nice to be. Uh, it's nice to be back in a respawn game. There you go. Pull them in, cut them. Works every time. Um, nice to be back in a respawn game with some good ass wall running. The mobility in this game, I think, feels really nice. You got a double jump. You can wall run. Good to go, BD. Uh, you've got a grappling hook that sometimes you will use. I think if this is the area, I think it is. He maybe will be using it shortly. Um, you know, you'll kind of jump off a wall and then hit the grappling hook. You can force pull ropes towards you. So you jump at a rope and then hit left trigger and it'll the rope will snap into your hand and then you're swinging. I thought that was kind of a cool... Uh, that, that felt cool. Um... Here's some good chain wall running. Yeah, this this probably ends... I think this ends in a grapple. Yeah, there you go. So you kind of jump, grapple, boom. Uh, you grapple to specific points, so it's not quite as freeform. I don't think they saw us. Let's move. And there's some kind of big building. What could it be? The storyline of the game is really, you know, in the, in the chunk that I played... Um, It wasn't immediately obvious what the overall situation was. Like, what is Cal Kestis doing and why? And how is this, you know, he's had to take this detour because his ship has been damaged. And how is that going to play into things? Um, but you kind of quickly get in invested in some things that are happening here. In terms of there being, you know, a site of great interest. Uh, that you are trying to get access to and 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 whatnot. That guy's got a shield. He's got a he's got a I guess a lightsaber proof shield. Is that a thing? Oh man. Okay. I didn't do that. That's cool. Find something. Hurry up, buddy. It's cool that you can. Yeah. Cut that dude up. Just stuck him. Just cake. Okay, get over here. Ugh. Like that's that was always fun. Um, that's Perry right there. With a lot of these guys, you know, the kind of stronger enemies, the Perry doesn't really lead to a one-hit kill all the time. Um, there is a stable. I you know. Oh man, I I did not actually go to. Uh, I didn't actually go to the stable and get a, a creature to ride. The the you can light areas with your lightsaber when you're in the dark, which is a really neat. It's neat. Oh, I thought I was gonna stick that guy from behind, but again, you know, a fair number of larger enemies like this uh, to deal with, and and these are the ones that you know you really kind of have to think about a little more, but not. Not that much more, <laughs> um, I guess I would say. Oh, man, okay. I didn't realize you could dismember one and have it still come at you. That's pretty neat. Help BD. Um, wow, yeah. That's cool. 
it, the, the game does a good job of making lightsabers feel powerful. And, you know, I, I did play the previous game, but not... I didn't finish it. Um, I think I got caught in that loop of like, this thing runs a little weird and I'm going to wait in for them to patch it and, and then get into it later and then just kind of never made it back to it. You know, a bunch of other games came out and uh, this is an interesting area with a lot of puzzle solving. Um, you see these doors that are kind of overgrown by something that you can't, you can't just cut those with a lightsaber. Oh, is it? Okay, this is a pretty good moment here where you get the ability to confuse and, and confuse larger animals. Nice. And so you can just kind of like hold down right bumper and press B and then that guy will go kill all these stormtroopers for you by throwing up on them. And then in the case when I did this, the the one stormtrooper got stuck behind a, a building and so the monster was, was trying to constantly get at that stormtrooper and so I would just walked away. I didn't have to fight the didn't have to fight the monster at the end, which was nice. Um You know, and this area has stuff where you're like, "Oh, we got to pull this lever to rotate this thing and do this," and you know, uh that that guy was hurting no one. That guy, there's dialogue there of that guy just going like, "Man, why am I always Oh, that's an Okay, yeah, that's a way to take care of that. Huh, okay. Yeah, I didn't spend a lot of time confusing animals. Instead, I just cut them in half. <laughs> Easy. We won't hurt you. Yeah, it's, it's implied very early on that you can ride mounts. Um... I just never did it. <laughs> um, a sand crawler. You know what that means. Jawas can't be far off. Oh. I did not make. I did not make it there. Oh, interesting. You know, Kailun Saloon down in the outpost is starving for some live entertainment. Hmm. Might not be a bad call. Didi swore one of those beasts gave him some side eye. Yeah, we're in. We'll catch you back at the outpost. See you there. Are you recruiting a DJ for your outpost? I didn't, I did not find, I did not do this either. Interesting. Yeah, a DJ, a DJ, literally a jizz jockey. Play me some of the finest jizz you got. Hook me up with that jizz. Um, but you know, in terms of it being like that kind of souls like game, you know, when you die, you lose. You know, you lose the XP you gained since the last time you meditated, and and then that is, you know, they, they you need to go back and kill that enemy again to get it back, and you know, there's elements like that. Um, but again, it's not like a stamina-based combat system, really. So it feels like kind of a, a very light version of those concepts, and I think it works. I think it works pretty well. It gives the game some stakes, like dying is a hassle. Um, but also, you, it seems like you're earning skill points at a pretty reasonable clip and, and, you know, being able to try out the different skill trees and do stuff. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. And you start out feeling, like I said, pretty powerful. You know, all these parries and pushes and pulls and everything that you have at your disposal really gives you a lot of toys to play with right out of the gate, and I thought that was neat. And I did this a couple of times. This is just silly. <laughs> yeah, so you can kind of glide down into areas. Um, the area I was in had some very specific puzzles that needed to be solved, and it was very much like, hey, we're putting one of these right here, and you need to go exactly to this area. You need to glide right to this exact spot in order to, to benefit from it. But I guess, yeah, the idea of like, hey, I can make this mount jump higher than I can, and then I can use that to get up. Like, there's just a lot of little nooks and crannies and stuff that you see and go like, I'll be able to figure out a way to get up there someday. But I guess if I had, maybe if I had taken a mount, I would have been able to get up there without uh, without much issue. So, here's, yeah, here's a, a chamber. This is like a, when I was talking about kind of a 
Breath of the Wild-esque shrine. This is uh, sort of what I was talking about. Or at least that, that tile set, that sort of uh, look. Yes, you can pet these things. These little puppety oddballs. Very nice. I, I think it's a very nice looking game. I think the environments, you get a good draw distance. I think these characters are, are very emotive. Take a look, you'll find the finest components in sundries this side of the outer rim. Now that's a domodendra guarantee. Hear that, buddy? A guarantee. That's right. Shop built on trust and... Does Cal Kestis sound like a young H. John Benjamin? You know, yeah, kinda. I think I'll browse a little. Yeah, so here's what I was talking about. You know, you get some different hairstyles. You find these priorite shards oh, all around, and you can you could spend them here on different hair. I think I would go for the headband look, but I didn't have enough. Here we see the the tavern in your uh, the in your uh, in your little base there. I guess. Oh, okay. I guess that's the uh, we that's the DJ we recruited, jizzing it up. Now that looks like a stage. Can't wait to hear what you've got. Sure, Grease's old jukebox predates the High Republic. We got you, Cal. Hit up DDEC if you want to hear anything specific. I will. Thanks. Aw, uh, could you kick that motherfucking gangster shit, please? Let's see here. Weird. <laughs> oh, Yub Nib Zek is in this? Damn! Damn! Cue the music. I bet it was a lot of fun to compose music for, with, with the idea of it being we need songs for like a jukebox DJ equivalent inside of this this bar. Like, you know, like the. Like that type of Star Wars music, not just the sweeping. Orchestral stuff, right? What? Oh man, I saw little batches of the little glowing batches of bugs. I just never thought to cut it with my lightsaber. I went over there looking to see if there was any kind of prompt or anything that showed up, but it did not. It's got a it's got a fair amount of this climbing in it. Uh, if you if you know me, you know that this style of climbing in video games is some of my least favorite kind of modern game design stuff. Uh, and so it's a bit of a trade-off. You get to do some cool wall running, but then also you're doing the uncharted thing of like, this is a specific texture that you can climb on. Come on now. Seeds. I could plant them, but where? Seeds. Well, you could plant them, but where? How about here? Apparently, this is okay. Apparently, this game's got gardening in it. Jeez. Now I wonder: is is there like a gameplay benefit to this? Are you harvesting the seeds for, you know, to get the force or whatever? We'll grow safe here. To what end, man? You know what I mean? Um, crazy. Where is this? I'm like trying to look at the area and go like, where? Uh, oh, you also find cosmetic pieces for the lightsaber in addition to pants and shirts and all that sort of stuff. These do seem like they're they're strictly cosmetic. Um, I don't know. I don't. I want my Cal Kestis to have the cool headband, but I I don't know that I care what his lightsaber looks like. Maybe color. 
Maybe color's a thing I would be interested in changing. But, um... But the actual look of the, the thing, uh, yeah, that's not necessarily my thing. Oh, yes, of course, different cosmetic pieces for, for BD-1. They slam into him like that, and that's uh, a, a pretty good little animation, I thought. Um, and you can change his color and, and, and all of that sort of stuff as well. Um, and, yeah, I don't know, I... I I came away from this. We've got one more video after this, but I think it's just like them scrolling through the settings on the PC version. Um, I came away from the game feeling pretty good about it. That's how I felt about the last one. Uh, and this just feels, you know, like a little grander in scope. And, uh, you know, this, this first area, this individual area felt very large. So, you know, like in the early parts of that first game, I feel like you're just like going, you have like multiple planets at your disposal. This, this feels more like, okay, we're going to live in this zone for a while and really establish the story, figure out who our bad guys are going to be, which I, I did, I did manage to see that, but I don't think I'm even allowed to say a name on that one. <laughs> it's a long list. It's, you know, hey, it's a licensed property. Long list of things where they're like, hey, don't say this. Don't say the name of this area that is a very common area in a lot of fiction in this universe. Do not, do not. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, but I thought the combat felt pretty rewarding. Like I said, you feel powerful, but not invincible. And... Uh, obviously, with like five different difficulty settings, you know, you're going to be able to tailor that a little bit, right? So, um, so you, you can kind of do your own thing there. And, and then, yeah, this is, this is just kind of, this is just, I don't, I don't know if this is to say, hey, it was turned all the way up or just kind of show the settings in the PC version. Obviously, this game's not out for another month, so some of this is probably subject to change. Um, and yeah, I guess like that's the thing is is I, I came away from it definitely interested in playing more of it. Um, to the point where I was like, you know, hey, you know, there's there's more to see here, but I think at this point, this game's out so soon. It's not like the 28th or something. It's, it's, it's coming around. It's just right around the corner. Um, that I was like, I'm good. You know, kind of, I'm going to leave off the, on this cliffhanger cut scene that I got to that kind of sets up some real wild stuff. And I'm like, huh, all right, that was a cool fight and a, a cool conclusion to the fight. And now things are kind of set into motion, whether those are the things that kind of govern the story of the whole game, or the, if that's just even the, the bits and pieces that we're dealing with in this individual zone, I suspect some of them are, um, galactic in nature, um, and not just things that have to be solved before we can go on to the next, uh, the next planet or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, um, you know, you, you know, you know me at this point, I'm not really a star Wars guy. Uh, I'm just, it's, it's just not, the fiction is not for me. It kind of never was. Even when I was a kid, I was just not especially into it. Um, I thought the toys were cool. I always thought the TIE fighter looked neat and you could push that button and the wings would pop off. That's, that was the extent of me liking Star Wars stuff as a kid. But, you know, over the years, there's been some really great Star Wars video games that, you know, even as someone who doesn't really care about the particulars of, you know, of that universe, like, you know, Dark Forces or, uh, Empire Strikes Back for the Atari 2600, X-Wing and TIE Fighter, um, you know, Jedi Outcast, some of that, some of that stuff they got into, but really just the first couple of Dark Forces games were some great shooters. I'm really interested to see what Respawn is doing with a Star Wars shooter, because uh, I, I, I just, I don't know, that seems like it could be very cool. Um, but this feels really good too. And, and I think the, the characters are at least the, the ones I encountered early on, they're fascinating. They feel like 
they feel like good whole characters when they need to, or they're just weird side characters that have one line of goofy dialogue. And then that's that, you know? Um, and I kind of got invested uh, a little bit in those characters, the overall story and, you know, the, everything about like being a Jedi and what is a Jedi, you know, like, like some of the stuff that I'm sure it will dabble in later on if I had to guess. Um, you know, I, I'm a little less interested in the specifics around that stuff, but you know, I, you get invested enough in the characters. I think that I'll see that stuff through, or I'd, I'd be willing to see that stuff through kind of no matter what. Um, it felt like a good high quality experience, you know, and that's what you want. I know that for that first game felt like it, uh, was a little rough around the edges on release, right? You know, like there was just aspects of it where you're just like, the performance is not quite there. There's elements of this game that when it all comes together, it's incredible, but there's just enough weird stuff around the edges that, that kind of got in its way. I would hope that, you know, with this game being a sequel, well, I don't know. All games have their, their own unique problems, right? So we'll see. But my hope would be that, that this game kind of ships in solid shape and, uh, and kind of avoids some of those, some of those missteps that, that the first game endured. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm curious to see if they have more lightsaber. So maybe this is a thing that if you're into the fiction, you're like, duh, of course there are five lightsaber styles. It's this one and this one. And, and it's not even a thing, but I'm over here going like, I don't know what, you know, do you hold them sideways? Is that going to be a thing? A defensive shell, like a Philly shell for lightsabers. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't really know, but I think the, the universe felt compelling. The, the storytelling felt sound. Uh, it felt like it was heading in an interesting direction. Um, I found the map slightly difficult to read. It's, it's a, it, it reminded me of Metroid prime in a handful of ways. Um, but you know, kind of got used to it and, and it was fine. Uh, and so overall, I guess, you know, my, my few hours that I, that I spent with it, I, I kind of came away from it going like, yeah, this is, this seems exactly like what it needs to be. In a lot of ways, it is, it is going to be very much more of the same. I think it'll feel very familiar to people who liked that first game, but also I think it, it does. Uh, and again, you know, I, I, speaking as someone who, who played a good chunk of that first game, but didn't make it all the way through, like, it feels like it's differenti differentiating itself and expanding on things in ways that, I don't know, just those individual areas or this individual area I was exploring, it just felt like there was a whole lot more here uh, than there was in some of those early zones in the first game. Um, and that first game's a little different because it kind of has you hopping around a little bit more and, and you know, you can travel out of your way really from the get-go and, and do different stuff at different planets and everything, whereas this is more like, no, you're here for a while. You're going to be doing stuff here before your ship is ready to go and, and, and go do something else. And yeah, I don't know. It, it felt really good to kind of spend time in that space and, and really kind of check off the beaten path and, and find a lot of, and, and find that there was stuff there, you know, or at least like elements of like, Oh, I'll bet I'll be coming here later. Cause this looks, looks like something major that they definitely would have written content around. And then some of it's just like, Oh, I went over here and Oh, there was a bonus item or there was this, or, you know, there's, Oh, there's a, a kind of a wall running here and I can kind of get up here and, I don't really want know what to do next because I'm probably missing an ability or, you know, almost in that kind of, again, Metroid-esque way of, of, you know, as you build your character out, you get access to, to more parts of the environment or, or, or what have you. Um, yeah. So I, I came away from it feeling pretty good about it. I would say overall it, uh, it felt good, looked very nice. Uh, I think Cal's, uh, beard sucks, but Hey, my beard sucks. So me and Cal, uh, we're, we're like this now. Anyway, that's, that's all the footage they sent out with it. So, uh, that's all from, from star Wars, Jedi colon survivor, uh, headquarters. <laughs> Thanks everybody for, uh, for joining me and, and hearing about it and everything. It was, uh, it was fun to, to get out there, to get the invite and go out and sit in dark room and <laughs> not talk to anyone in place of star Wars. Uh, yeah, seriously, it was, it was very, it was very quick turnaround on that stuff. They, they, they did some other stuff. I think they, you know, there were people that were in town for like four days for this thing. Uh, and, and, and whatever else I, you know, since I live local, I just drove in, saw the game and, and split. Um, but yeah, it was a good time checking it all out. Uh, hopefully you had a good time watching me 
talk about the good time I had. This good time has been transferred onto you, I guess. Anyway, game's out at the end of the month. Uh, I'd say, you know, maybe give it a look. Well, uh, you know, hey, when it comes out, I'll spend some more time playing it. And, uh, you know, maybe you can uh, make a decision about it then if you so desire. Anyway, until next time, that's me. I'll see ya. Bye.